Welcome to the Holy Spirit's Curriculum of Joy podcast. My name is Wanaka Oberhuber, and my guest today is Prem Mulberry. Hi. Hi. Wonderful that you're here. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. So, you told me before we have have this conversation, you told me that you are very into this lesson in A Course in Miracles is experiencing the presence of God in every moment. I'd like to go deeper with that. First, I'd like to ask you, how did you live before you got to know A Course in Miracles? And how did your view of the world change afterwards? Well, I think, how did I get to know it? Well. You know, I think I was a seeker since I was a small child. And I tried everything, you know. I went to different uh, churches and I I did different mystical things and I went to anything I was invited to and I went through different in initiations, but I remained the same person. Uh, you know, I was the seeker. It was the self-identity of the seeker. And... I would say the main thing that Course in Miracles has done has led me to be the finder instead of the seeker. So that that self-identity of, of seeking something that I thought would happen in the future uh, is not there anymore because there's a recognition at present time that it is it is now what I thought would happen in the future was always happening now. It was a matter of uh, recognition, like the, like the Course says, uh, enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. So I had that that recognition. I'm not saying I'm enlightened, not at all, because I I'm, I'm you know maybe just a beginner in this whole thing. Who knows? But there is a recognition that what I wanted to bring me peace is here and now. It's consciously accessible. Uh, it's just a uh, it's just a matter of changing my mind or tuning in to that which is present. And the way that I've done that, you know, following the guidance of Jesus in meditations, is um, is through feeling, because feeling is something that is you can only feel now. You cannot feel what you felt yesterday, and you cannot feel what you're going to feel tomorrow. You can only feel right now. And, you know, in my meditations, Jesus told me that what I'm feeling is uh, explained in Lesson 189 of A Course in Miracles, which is, I feel the love of God within me now. And that's not just an, uh, uh, like a, an affirmation. It's a truth. Everything in A Course in Miracles is telling the truth without any exaggeration. It is the way it is right now. So he says that right now what I'm feeling is the love of God. But I always thought that my feelings were something else. You know, I, I, I gave stories to my feelings. I, I made it anything but the love of God. And Jesus said, no, what you feel is the love of God. And in my meditations, he told me that for about two months. I just thought, well, you know, maybe I used to, I used to wake up very early every morning and, and do a meditation. I called it a listening mes meditation where I listened inside. And, and Jesus would say, the same thing for about two months after he delivered this. It, he said, what you're feeling is not what you think it is. And I was always complaining about a feeling I had. And it's a feeling I, I think that a lot of people have in the world. I used to call it loneliness and give it a, a, a story. But he said, well, what is it in your life that never goes away and never changes? And you know, for me, it was loneliness. It, it never went away and it never changed. And I tried everything not to experience it. There's a, a cultural program that says, well, you should not feel loneliness. You should do everything you can not to feel it. You should get distracted from it. Do anything to distract yourself from this loneliness. And, and so I, I bought into that cultural program and I did everything I could to distract me from that. But it never went away and it never changed. And then Jesus just said, one morning, what in truth will never go away and never change? What in truth? And the truth is God. 
God will never go away and God will never change. The presence of God will never go away and the presence of God will never change. And right in that instant, he was saying that what I was calling, what I was experiencing a whole life long, my whole lifetime was, was God. And it wasn't what I thought it was at all. But that meant that if that really was God, then there was no reason to have ever been a spiritual seeker because God was all, what I was seeking for was always with me. And what did, what was that going to do for my self-identity? You know, I, I was firmly a, a, a spiritual seeker. And so he would give me this very simple message, you know, every day. And the message didn't change. I was, I kept on going to my meditations, hoping that he'd tell me something different that time. But he told me the same thing every day, every day, every day for a couple of months until I thought, okay, what if Jesus is true? What if I'm not true? What if I give him a chance to be true? If this is God, what's God doing inside me? And all of a sudden, it just flooded in. God is only giving. Like the Course in Miracles said, God only gives. What is God only giving? Love. Well, what does God have to give? Only love. Because God only gives what God is, which is only love. And all of a sudden, my, my self-identity crashed. It just crashed and burned. It crumbled like, a, like a, a, a stone wall that had no mortar in between the stones. It just crumbled. It fell down. And the, the seeker was gone and the finder was there. And from that point of view, the, it's been the finder that's only finding more and more and more and more and more. Uh, and this is what the Course in Miracles is all about. It's, it's all about, you know, becoming aware of the, the power and love of God within, letting the truth be true, and, and following that truth wherever it goes. So, you know, I, I call it the best party on the block. It, it's just amazing. It, it's just wonderful. But one important thing that I've had to do is make peace with being wrong and actually um, stand to be corrected at every instant. Because if there's a, a, an old self-identity based on separation from God, okay, then from that point of view, I'm wrong about absolutely everything. So that, that doesn't allow that old self-identity to come back for very long periods of time at all, just really just a few seconds at a time. Just It's like the ego saying, well, it used to work. Will it work again if I try it again? But then there's this awareness saying, ah, it's, it's back. It's, it's happening again. I know it to be wrong. I know that the truth is true and nothing else is true. And what, my, what, what uh, the uh, separated self-identity tells me is not true about anything. And there's no peace in that either. So why not just let God be God? And in, in Lesson 189, it says the simplest way to God is just let, let him be, merely let him be. So if you just let God be, uh, that's itself an act of surrender. But another thing about surrender is that, you know, surrender is really letting the Holy Spirit be in charge all the time. Because if I want to be in charge, what happens is that I, I you know, take a spiritual teaching or I take, an, uh, a, you know, an incident in life and I interpret it according to an old thought system. And that's not surrender. Surrender is allowing the new thought system to be ever-present all the time. Uh, and that means the Holy Spirit will make the decisions. The Holy Spirit will give me the words. The Holy Spirit will, will lead me to an encounter. The Holy Spirit will, will you know, be with me all, the, all throughout the day. God goes with me all throughout the day. And, and this is true. So... What I've discovered in A Course in Miracles is that absolutely every single thing in it is true. It's not a, a wished-for state that's going to happen in the future. It's happening now. Nothing I see means anything. Well, that means now. Nothing I see means anything now. Uh, the peace of God is shining in me. When? Now. So it's the, co the, the, the Course in Miracles speaks to the present. And if... So what, what what can a seeker who is expecting to find something in the future do? You you know if if the seeker is sincere, the then and the truth is given, 
in the form of A Course in Miracles, then the seeker has to surrender. So surrender is, you know, I, whew, I would say it's the quantum leap above everything. You know, I, I, I used to see my mind, you know, I used to be able to see my mind in, in these meditations as being unchanged throughout all of the years of seeking. You know, just doing this experience, having that meditation, doing that workshop or that other thing, going to this ashram or that, and always taking the the um, the teachings and interpreting them in the uh, through the mind of a self or a separated self identity, and and making those uh, teachings appropriate to sustain the separated self identity. And when I thought that sustain, when I saw that sustaining the the separated self identity was doing exactly that, it was sustaining the self the separated self identity. Then I knew that I was the obstacle, and my way was not working. I actually sat there in in a meditation early in the morning, and I thought my way is not working. It it was a, uh, uh, you know. You could call it a revelation, or it was just uh, I was ready to surrender right then. But it was there. There was nothing else that I could do in order for a self identity to try to make some progress on a spiritual path, because the self identity was limiting the the progress. And every single thing I had done up to that point was through the conceptual self identity, and I just had to. Uh, say well my way doesn't work jesus let's try it your way and in that instant in that instant of willingness you know jesus says in a course it only takes a little willingness and i've discovered that that willingness is so small it's just a microscopic amount of willingness not a huge amount of willingness you don't even have to be aware that you're willing such a small amount is is uh, required but the holy spirit is aware uh, of your willingness and in that instant when i realized my way wasn't working and man I'll, and maybe jesus's way would work that was the willingness and there was a uh something that happened in the mind it was like an awakening it was like a, a letting go of a huge amount of pressure inside the mind oh i don't have to do it jesus said he'll do it for me and not only that jesus said he'll do everything for me the holy spirit will do the whole thing for me if i let him and that's a part of a 12-step teaching. I can't do it. He will if I let him. So in that, in that instant of willingness, I was willing to let him. And everything changed at that time. It's like I don't, I don't really have to try to do anything because no matter what I might think I might be trying, the Holy Spirit is going to use that in order to... Uh, to bring about the Holy Spirit's um, desired outcome, which means uh, God got my back, <laughs> which means I, you know, Jesus says you need do nothing, <laughs> and it is really true. You need do nothing, but you do you one thing that you do need to do in order to make you need do nothing uh, really work is you need to surrender. You know, you need to see that your your way is not working. But Jesus' way, the Holy Spirit's way, will work. Oh, and even before you see that, you, you can hope that it'll work. You can want it to work. You just have to be willing to try something, something else besides your way. Because the human way is designed not to do it, not to work. It sabotages the path. So you've got to have another way. And you just have to be willing to see. The promise is that way will lead to peace. You know, the promise is that that, that that way is good, that way is safe, and that way is freedom. Love is good, love is safe, love is freedom. And love has, and you, you do not have to be, uh, you do not have to fear love. You know, before this awakening happened, I realized, well, actually it was after the awakening happened that I realized that I was, my problem was I was fearing love. I was fearing this feeling that turned out to be the love of God within me now, and I was doing everything not to experience that I, out of fear, you know. But 
if you settle into that feeling, the feeling doesn't do anything. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't kill you. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't insult you. It doesn't give you shame. It doesn't humiliate you. It doesn't do any of the things that the human mind fears that this feeling, which I used to call um, uh, loneliness, it, do, it doesn't do any of those things that I feared it would. When you make peace with the feeling, you're making peace with yourself. When you make peace with the feeling, you're making peace with God. When you're making peace with the feeling, you're making peace with a huge part of um, uh, of your mind. And, and peace has to be total. And the Course in Miracles is the path to total peace, to total freedom. And, and the, the method is through forgiveness. And forgiveness is letting go. Let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. It's the yoga of letting go. There's all these yogas. The word yoga means union with God. So it's real it's realizing the that the the union of God through uh letting go of everything, the conceptual self-identity, which includes every every interpretation you've ever had about everything. It's letting go of that and letting the truth be true instead. And it's just like, wow, what replaces all of that stuff is not only is a is a the feeling of freedom, but it's a, a still mind. Because you don't have to figure anything out. You don't have to figure it out if you're doing it right or if you're if you're going too fast or too slow on your path. Well, not too many people think they're going too fast, but a lot of people think they're going too slow or not being uh, or not going at all. Uh, and that's just an interpretation, you know, a mental interpretation of a uh, of feeling. You know, I feel like I'm not making it anywhere. Okay, well, let me tell a story about that. Let me prove to myself that that's true. But that feeling, no matter what you're telling yourself the feeling is, is what the feeling of the love of God feels like in that instant. So you are connected with God. The story is something else besides the connection with God. Something else is in the mind because of a fear of God, because of a fear of love. But, you know, you just have to take a risk, which is, you know, God's way is better. You know, my way is not working, is not bringing peace. You know, I want the peace of God. Well, God's way will work. Why don't I try that out? And okay, and the ego is going to say, no, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt because you're going to feel all this loneliness. Well, that doesn't matter if you make peace with that feeling. There's nothing to fear when you make peace with that feeling. So that, that's just, that's what happened to me. I don't know if this is a very common experience, you know, to make peace with that feeling. The closest thing I've ever experienced is Eckhart Tolle's teaching in um, The Power of Now. You know, I... I was having this experience for a few years before I read A Power of Now, and I thought I was the only one having it. I'd never heard about it before from anyone else, but then he describes the exact same thing that I was experiencing in A Power of Now. So other people, I'm pretty sure, are experiencing what he describes. It's just that I have not met too many of them. I've been teaching this way for, for years already because it is a very simple way. But I don't get much feedback to uh, whether or not it's working on other people. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. No, I'm going to let that go, too. Yeah. Anything else you want to know? To befriend uh, the experience that you're having, this, this that one labels loneliness or boredom or whatever else, other words might come, right? <laughs> not knowing what to do or, yeah you know, it, it is the feeling in each individual that they want to it, yeah it's an uncomfortable feeling in most people for me it was loneliness and it was also boredom i used to avoid those things like the plague but jesus says that what i feel now is the feeling of god so if i stop telling stories about it and let it be true that it is my conscious connection with god in this instant um it, it changes absolutely everything it makes me wrong about everything i'm thinking if i'm thinking that this is boredom or this is loneliness or this is anger or something else or he did this or she did that or something else like that if i if i can make peace with being wrong about all that stuff then peace fills in all of that mental 
you know, space in which there was conflict, it, it is replaced by peace, the peace of God. And Jesus says, well, uh, in the, in, I want the peace of God. He says, many people have said that, but few people are really willing to do that. Mostly because they think it's going to be a really hard and painful experience. And they just don't want to do that. Let me try just one more thing before I try it Jesus' way. Maybe my way, which has never worked throughout this whole lifetime, maybe the next time will work. You know, maybe if I try something different and the ego will conven you know, conveniently make us think that uh, what it's already tried a lot of times before, it has not tried ever, you know, it has never tried. So give it just a chance. Get, you know, the ego lives on time. The ego is addicted to time. And so it will do anything to get a, a fix of time. You know, time is, is an addiction that you, you can never satiate. You can have an addiction to anything else and you can, you can uh, supply yourself with whatever that is and it might satiate that desire for a few minutes. But time is never satiated. Once you give the ego it what it wants, which is time, it will just want more time. You know, there is no space of time that um, in which the ego feels satisfied with the time you've given it. It always wants more. So it says, well, let me try this thing that won't work. I won't tell, you know, Pram or anybody else that it's not going to work. I'll just make him forget that he tried it a million times before and make him think he's doing it for the first time right now. And that'll give me lots of time to survive. That's what all the ego wants to do is survive. It's like mandated to survive, uh, you know, and it's very selfish about that. But if you can see through this, you know, most of the stories we tell ourselves, we told ourselves a, a thousand times before or more. And we want to, and, but we keep telling ourselves those same stories because we, we forget, you know, it's the ego makes us forget that we've already said the same thing in our mind a thousand times. It says, let me just try this for the first time. Not, you know, uh, conveniently forgetting that it's not the first time at all, it's the 10,000th time that we've tried that. It, and it's just to keep the ego alive. But when the recognition comes that my way won't work, my way has never worked, I have no reason to think that it ever will work, maybe the Holy Spirit's way will work. I, and I really want the peace of God. That is for sure. I really want the peace of God. I'm willing to give the Holy Spirit's way a try. In that little willingness, everything changes. And once you surrender, you're surrendered. You know, the Holy Spirit does not give up what you have surrendered. You have surrendered your 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 body, mind, soul, spirit, and everything. Your everything. You've surrendered that. The Holy Spirit doesn't give it up and say, "No, give it your try again." Uh, uh. What the Holy Spirit will do is remind you every time that you want to do it your way again. That you're trying to do it your way, and it's not gonna and it's not gonna work. And you have surrendered. And I'm not giving up on you. The Holy Spirit says. You know, you're surrendered, you got, you got to do it my way. And when you realize that, yeah, his, his way is working, it makes this, this settling down into the truth, this settling down into the peace of, of God easier and easier every time. It, it's really, it's really wonderful. And it's, it's so hard to put it into words. Like, I, I can tell you how it came about to me, but what it is that came about i really can't tell you you know all words i can open my mouth and want to say something and maybe ah will come out ah and then there'll be a it will be followed by silence it will be followed by the energy of the relationship between uh, the god the father and myself and that is, you could say ah as an ah, like it's awesome or something, but but it's just ah, like not even the ah can be completed. It's it's well, I call it the undescribable beauty within, uh, the beauty of the stillness of the silence of God. It it it's just beyond anything that can be spoken of. And and no matter how much you might want to give it away, 
how much you might want to grab onto somebody and shake them and say, do you feel that? Do you see that? Are you aware of that? That light, that light energy of God, you know, you can't because that's a personal, that's the, the personal relationship between you and your mother, father, God. You really can't give it away, but everybody can have it at their own time. And it really does depend on willingness. You know, like I said before, it's the willingness to let go of everything. The willingness to forgive. Forgiveness is is the key to happiness. And, and you know, Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, God would help you to forgive yourself. That is to let go of all of your ideas about yourself. And this is the meditation in Lesson 189. You know, simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you th of what you are and what God is. You know, you have to let go of everything that you think you are, and then what's left is this stillness, is this uh, this amazingness, and it never goes away, and it's accessible to you anytime you want it, day or night, it's accessible to you. So why not have it? Yeah, so there's all these blocks to the awareness of love's presence are these, is this unwillingness, right? And I guess you took it, you were shown all those unwillingnesses when that was opening up, right? And it, it dissolved in the face of your willingness, right? Yeah, yeah. And it happened, you know, really, really quickly. You know, the revelation that I was, the it was my unwillingness that was preventing me from experiencing the peace of God. You know, revelation seems to come in just a flash. And to translate that flash of, of uh, communication into words, that takes time. So that that's really hard to describe. But it is like when, when I was being fed this, this um, the truth that it was my unwillingness that was preventing me from from experiencing what I purported to want to experience. I was being fed that for a long time, and then finally I decided, okay, um, okay, Jesus is not giving up on my on his message to me. So what if I just play along with it for a while? You know, what if I humor him for a while? But in that instant of willingness to play along with, with, with the truth, that was what surrender was. Even though my ego was saying, well, yeah, I'll, I'll do it my way. I'm going to surrender my way. But Jesus or the Holy Spirit said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I sense a willingness to do it my way. I sense he really does want the peace of God. And he really is aware that his way is not working and it never will work. Ha, I got him. And so it's, it's like uh, he invited me into this, to this uh, light. But it's not a light that you can see with your eyes. I don't know a better word for it because my path is more a path of feeling. But, but. You know, you can use the word light just as well as, as anything else. You know, feeling has other has other meanings. You know, there's physical feelings. It's not a physical feeling. There is emotional feeling. It's it's sometimes emotional, but mostly it's not. There is psychic feelings, which is intuitive feelings, which is closer to that. But this is a feeling of fineness, like like even. Even on on the level of uh, psychic feelings, which is very fine anyway, the feeling of connection with God is much much finer than that. You know, you don't even have to seek for that inside, because it's already there. It's it, just trust that it's there. Trust would settle every problem. Now, have you ever noticed <laughs> that every single question you can have on a on a on a on a spiritual level is answered in a course in miracles but it's answered in a way of experience 
even though there's tons and tons and tons of words in A Course in Miracles, I mean, it's a big, thick book. The, the answer is experience. It's not words. But then the, and the, the paradox is that experience, even though it's written about in 1,200 pages of A Course in Miracles, you can't really say, you can't really talk about it. That's the paradox. Which makes the Course in Miracles really, you could call it a signpost, a pointer to get there. Uh, it, it, well, I don't know what you call it. I just call it the, you know, the thing that I'm probably the most thankful for in my life. Yeah, you you are describing it as as a safe experience. This this opening this willingness i think that's something that's really significant for for those of us who have not decided to surrender yet right to know about it. look inside your mind and see what it is you fear do you fear love do you fear the love of god do you do you think that the love of god is going to shatter your self-identity the, tr the truth is the love of God is going to shatter your self-identity. But you can take it from somebody who's had the experience that it is good, it is safe, and it is freedom. It absolutely will not hurt you. It could easily bring about tears uh, that you can't really, you don't know why they're there. There's this state of consciousness in which you don't know if you're laughing or crying. You're, you're laughing, but you're also crying at the same time. And within that, that, you know, the mind might be saying, what is going on? Why am I doing this? If you let go of that, you might just find a gratitude that you that is so profound that you've never experienced it before. You know, you're going into an experience that you've always feared. Yet when the experience, when you're in that experience, all you can think is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the paradox. It, it is not a fearful thing. Awakening is not a fearful thing. The assumption that the awakening is going to have anything at all to do with what the conceptual human mind uh, thinks it's going to be like, that might be fearful. But the conceptual human mind is wrong about everything. So if, if anybody who's listening to this has a fear of awakening, I'm just saying you don't have to have that fear. Because it, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. It's going to be better than, it's going to be better, more calm, more peaceful. It, it's going to be saturated in gratitude. It's going to be saturated in the presence. You're going to be consciously aware of the, of the living presence of a love well, of your creator. You're created by the living God of the universe. It's just amazing. Yeah, I love that description. And it's, it's very encouraging. Yeah. yeah, do not fear it. Invite it in. You know, even if you just want to see what it's like, just ask for a glimpse. You know, Holy Spirit, I'd really like to have a glimpse of the of the love of God. I really like to have something that's going to blow my socks off. That's going to blow me away. That I that I have never thought could be possible. You know, the paradox is you never thought it could be possible as long as you're in a, a state of uh, uh, separation. But when it happens, you'll see that it's always been there. You know, it's not. It's not. It's not only possible, it's not only probable, it's definite, and it's, it's, it's eternal. It's always there. There was never a time in which uh, you were not um, connected to the love of God. There was never a time in which you were not aware of the love of God. You just thought you were unaware of the love of God because you were calling it something else, and you did everything you could to, uh, to be right about that. And it's never, it's never what you think. It's always better than anything you can possibly imagine. That's a promise. It's always better. That is really, really beautiful. Yeah. 
So I'll open the floor if anyone wants to ask a question or comment, you may. Otherwise, I will continue. I'll give you a moment to decide whether you want to or not. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, then I guess we'll continue. <laughs> So now you've described the overall process, but you haven't described any of the, the actual life experiences or the places you've been or how some, some color to it of what was happening around you. Or oh, well, whatever. Yeah. I uh, never wanted to be in this world. Ever since I was born, I never wanted to be here. I thought that this is not my place. I thought, you know, that it must have been an accident that I got here. Like, like I got off the bus at the wrong neighborhood, and it's a, it's not my neighborhood. I'm not familiar with this neighborhood, and it's crazy, and there's gunshots, and there's violence in this neighborhood, and all I want to do is get back on the bus and go home. I just want to go home. And... So that was my my contemplation, and I heard about this thing called reincarnation, and I thought, well, if there's reincarnation, I don't want to be a person anymore. I want to be something different, like an eagle, you know, to soar high and and be free, and all this stuff. Freedom is always a big thing. Did you ever realize, by the way, that the word freedom, F R E E D O M, is freed om. When the I am consciousness is set free. That's freedom. So in this lifetime, I've always, uh, you know, been waiting for this freedom to, or waiting to remember freedom, because I'm there. You know, I'm not separated from that. It's a memory. the The whole awakening is just a memory. But anyway, I, you know, there was. A time in Mexico when I was I walked into a cave, a Maya cave, and I, I realized that I had been there before. It wasn't a deja vu. I really know where I was going in this cave because I actually had been there before. And I thought, oh no, the only way that I can experience or explain this is reincarnation. I've been here before. And I thought, shit, I don't want to reincarnate. I don't want to do this again. I don't want to do this again. And I thought, there's got to be a way to break this cycle. There's got to be a way to not do this again. And, you know, that, that sounded really good, but I didn't know even where to look. I had no idea, you know, that there was any philosophies or anything, you know, that will help you out with this to break the cycle of incarnation and reincarnation. I had no idea. All I knew is that I wanted it. And then I heard, uh, uh, you know, Buddhism was teaching that uh, you can you can break the cycle and then hinduism was teaching that you can break the cycle and one thing that happened in i think around about four years old is i was thinking that um, if jesus ever came back to this world in my lifetime i would go to the end of the world to see him to have his darshan and then it was, I think, in the in the late seventies or something, I saw a video about uh, the second coming of Christ, and they started to talk. They had, there was a ten minute section about this holy man in India named Sai Baba, and uh, and I thought that they were linking him up as being maybe the second coming, and I swore to God that I was going to go see Sai Baba. Um, it was later when I saw that video again, I saw that, that, that wasn't that at all. It wasn't that at all. They never said that Sai Baba was the second coming. They, they didn't even hint at that, but, it, but, but that was my calling to go to India where I started to learn that there are ways of breaking the cycle of, of, of incarnation and reincarnation. And before that, before I went to India the first time, I got into a course in miracles in New Mexico. But I, I really didn't know what it was talking about. I thought the language was really hard to understand, but I kept on, on doing it and doing it. And then 
I had a light experience at Sai Baba's ashram. And then I decided I wanted to become a minister to teach this. And uh, I started doing a course even more at that time. But I was also doing other things like like a, something called Chogchen in Tibetan Buddhism. But then uh, on another trip to India, I got the teaching, you always know your way because it's the way you come back to after you try something else. And I knew instantly, well, my way was A Course in Miracles because I always went back to A Course in Miracles after trying something else. So then I, I started to stick with that. But the, in India, I heard of a lady named Amma, who is also known as the Hugging Saint, Amachi. And I went to see her, and she, she struck me as being the uh, incarnation of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in physical form that you can actually see and touch and talk to now. So I, I, I went to her ashram, and my daughter grew up on her ashram, and I, I was there and had some amazing experiences uh, through meditation and contemplation. My first transpersonal experience happened there where I saw everything was just emanating from my own heart, that I was actually, I, everything was, was, was me. Everything is me. And that was really cool. But I was also doing A Course in Miracles on her ashram, and I was the only one doing that. And I prayed while on her ashram to learn about another ashram if there was one anywhere in the world that uh, was doing A Course in Miracles. Within days of that prayer, I met a person who, uh, who drew me a map to a place in Wisconsin, USA, called Endeavor Academy, which was an ashram of A Course in Miracles, where I ended up being for 14 years. And that's, when, that's where the awakening took place, even though there were, there were plenty of glimpses before that that's where something happened in which i could not go back you know that's that's where something happened in which that solidified um what i've been speaking of up to this point it solidified the awareness it's that's where surrender happened you know it was in an early morning meditation in the Endeavor Academy Library where all this happened. I don't. I forget the year this was. So that was really important. Actually, everything in this lifetime was important. I never wanted to be here. It's it's like this. There's always been this idea that this is going to be the last one, and I've just been shown the way and told what to do, and told what not to do, and told who to see, and who to, to follow in this lifetime to, uh, to make forgiveness uh, all-encompassing, to make letting go all-encompassing, so that only the Holy Spirit's voice is heard inside. So it's just been, it's been a whole lifetime. You know, it's not just one thing after another. It's been a whole lifetime. Uh, you know, as a small child, praying before uh, I was ever taught to pray, you know, and mostly p praying for peace, not praying because I want this or I want a new toy or something like that. No, I wanted peace. I wanted the people in my family who did not seem to be in peace to be in peace. So there was, then then that prayer kind of went off into other prayers like, well, uh, bless this person and bless that person and bless that total stranger I see walking down the street and then till, until I finally got, oh, bless everybody. <laughs> Just bless everybody. Now the major prayer is um, loka samasta sukino bhavantu, which means may all the beings in all the worlds be happy. Yeah, everything. You can't say that there was one thing in this lifetime that led to this instant. Because this instant is part of a whole. The whole thing led to this instant. Nothing was more important than anything else. Everything is connected to everything. You know, it's like my life is a diamond, and the diamond has all these facets cut on it. And I'm I'm sitting on a facet right now talking to you, but there's lots and lots of facets on this, but it's one diamond. And and who knows? 
who knows? Here's something that really interesting happened. So many things happened when I was in the, the uh, presence or in some association with Amma, who, like I said, in my mind is an incarnation of the Holy Spirit alive on this world right now. But there was this one time sitting on retreat in a chair, not really not really expecting anything or even having a, any spiritual thoughts in my mind. And then WAPO, everything was remembered as being, you know, that's what awakening is. It's, it's, it's memory. Everything is memory. But this was, you know, in both Eastern and Western teachings, at the end of life, you, you know, you, you, you get glimpses or you get flashes. Your life flashes in front of you. Okay, I've heard that all of my life, and I always thought that these flashes might be like photographs or something. Oh, this happened, that happened, these are still shots. But then the memory of the whole thing came that this, that it's like, this is not going to happen. This is happening now. You're, you're not going to have uh, flashes. You know, you're having, this is the flash right now. This is the memory of the entire lifetime. This is, show, you know, you're already at the end. And Jesus says this. You're looking at this from the point at the end of time. He says that in, in a couple of his books. There's the Course of Miracles and the Course of Love. They both say that this is a memory. And so when you get this glimpse, you see that, that, you, that there is, you know, they, you know, everything falls together in this. There is no predetermination because it's already determined. But within the memory, it seems like you have choice. But you don't have choice because you're really remembering something that's already over with. I don't know if this is uh, easy for anybody to understand. I don't know if I'm putting it in good words or not. Um, but this is just an experience that this has already happened. You can't change anything. If you're going to awaken in this lifetime, you, you're just going to remember your awakening. You're not going to do anything. It's you're remembering it because it already happened. Everything that you're going, that it seems like you're going to do, it, you, you already did it. You're just going to remember how it happened when you did it. This is all just a memory. So you really have nothing to worry about because there's nothing that you can, you know, you know, you don't have to fight anything. It's going to happen the way it already did happen. For me, that was a relief. You know, I don't have to make things happen. I just have to see how it did happen already. Is that clear? Oh, it's it's a. Uh something that is very prominent in the course of miracles as well yeah everything already has happened yeah so so to think about it and to get a feel for it is important and and so your description is certainly helpful for to get a feel for it because this remembering what already has happened right yeah and that's what you're doing now you're remembering right now what already happened. Yeah, so that's a very important thing to look at because yeah, what what is one of the qualities of a of a teacher of God? It's certainty, for instance, right? And so that because and that's one of the reasons that there's certainty because teacher of God knows that it already has happened, right? Yeah. I see that Julio wants to speak. So go ahead, Julio. Julio. Did you want to speak? Yeah, okay, can you hear me now? I yeah. was having problems uh, putting yeah, this thing. I, but I wanted to say that, yeah, you're definitely um, explaining it well. And uh, that that you just said uh, uh, to me, it gives me a lot of comfort that um, 
everything that is happening is already been done, you know, and then and then all we're doing is remembering or or uh, uh, that that you know that what already happened and is already done, and at the end of the tunnel or at the end of the light or that we've we've already you know awakened. So nothing that reassures me that nothing here can affect my true self, you know, my higher self. So thank you. I would I came in late, but it, it, I, everything you're saying it makes perfect sense. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you need fear nothing. You need do nothing. The Holy Spirit got your back. Uh, you're just going into the light, you know. And the light is good. The light is safe, and the light is freedom. The light is better than anything you can possibly imagine. Um. And if you want to tell anybody about it, you better let go of that desire because it's too much for words. It's just, it's too blissful for words. It's a personal gift between your father and you. And if if your father wants somebody to have that gift, your father will give you that, give that person that gift in the best way for the other person. So you're waking up your way. I'm waking up my way. Everybody's waking up their own way. I think Jesus says that, you know, God made a way for everybody. And I think the Buddha taught that there were 84,000 different paths to the light. Personally, I think it, there must be 84,000 different personality types and there's a way for everybody. So my way seems to be, um, you know, surrender surrender to the Holy Spirit and uh, just seeing how it's how this surrender is described in A Course in Miracles. You know, the, I don't even know, as I speak right now, I don't even know if you could say A Course in Miracles is my path, although, you know, I it probably is my path, but A Course in Miracles is a really, really good description of how awakening happens and what awakening is like here's something you can try have you ever tried doing the lessons everybody does the lessons from from forward to backward from the first to the last have you ever tried it um from the last to the first you know that's equally powerful the last is like this holy instant would i give to you i be you in charge for i would follow certain your direction brings me peace that's the first lesson okay and it it builds up builds up builds up until you have the revelation of nothing i see means anything and then the mind is still wow uh, uh, <laughs> it, you know it's multi-dimensional a course in miracles it everything is in it it's just so fantastic but what he's doing is that he's telling you the way it is now, not the way it's going to be. So, and he says that the course is meant to save time. Well, that's just allowing the truth to be true. What he says is the way it is now. That saves a lot of time. It does. It's not going to be true. You know, it's not going to be the way Jesus says it is next week or after I have some experience. It's the way it is right now. Here's an here's a good mantra. You know, I've had several mantras in my life. Like the number one mantra, which is still my mantra, is just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But every time I hear the word already, I think, yeah, it's already like that. Yeah, it's uh, the light has already come. Yeah, the truth is already true. So every time I hear the word already, I, 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 it makes me happy because it reminds me of my relationship with God. It's not going to happen after I seek for 10 more years. It's already there now. And it has always been like that. So it's just make peace with now. Don't try to figure out now. Surrender to now. Settle into now. God is with you now. God, you know, the truth is truth now. There's nothing to figure out <laughs> because the figuring out is just going to be, you know, uh, the the ego's attachment to time. You know, the, the ego loves to figure things out because that's just like a needle in its arm. Figure thing out. It's going to take some time to figure this out. Well, what does Jesus mean by this? Well, I, I got, let me go to this course group and let's talk about what Jesus means by this. No, 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 no. How about shutting up? 
Never, here's a good uh, spiritual teaching. Never pass up a good opportunity to shut up. <laughs> and Jesus also told me, in your awakening, all you have to do is show up and shut up. Show up to the truth being uh, present already now and shut up to all of your excuses how that is not true. You know, it's really, really, really simple. You know, you know how, it, as Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, how simple is the great way to salvation? Because it is simple. And he says in Lesson 189, simply do this in this short meditation. Simply do this. He doesn't say, they say hey, do this meditation, but make it really complicated. No, he said, do it simply. Simply do this. Everything about it is supposed to be simple. It's not supposed to be made complicated. So then we can ask, well, how come he wrote, how come the book is so big if it's so simple? How come, you know, in English anyway, it's not really your typical everyday English. There was a point in time, I spent a couple of years translating it, writing it down on a computer, the, the, the English version of A Course in Miracles. I wanted to, to make it into American English so I could understand it. <laughs> And I was going to send it off to the Foundation for Inner Peace and said, here, you can have this. It's the American translation. You know, that was just ego, you know, it, trying to do it my way. And when the awakening happened, the course became so simple. It could not be simpler than the way it is right now. But if you're not letting the truth be true, the course can be really complicated. But once you see, oh, yeah. You know, once you're in that state where you where you don't need any more words, you know, then all of those words are so simple. They're elegant. They're 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 poetic. They're they cannot be more simple. But it requires the willingness. The willingness will bring the experience, and the spirit the experience will prove the simplicity of the whole thing. And it will also, the experience will also prove that it's always been this simple. You never had to do anything. It says you need do nothing. And it says when the awakening happens, one of the first things that you realize is that you never had to do anything. It was always like that. It was already there the whole time. But it's like, it's like the awakened consciousness is like a, a pane of clear glass that you have right in front of your nose. And you can't see it because it's transparent. Uh, there's one experience that I had at Endeavor Academy. The parting of the veil happened there. And in the parting of the veil, that happened as a result of willingness also. This is a good story. I could tell this. I was in this place called the Healing Center, and I was in a really bad mood. There was the, the, the veil parted. The veil was like a clear membrane that had been in front of my uh, eyes all of my life. I never even noticed it before because it was like I just said a minute ago, like a, a, a clear glass in front of your nose. You don't notice it. You don't know it's there. You might notice it when it's gone because something's different. But when that veil parted and it parted from the left part of my vision to the right, it parted in a physical way. I could actually see it part. What, what it took with it when it parted was every meaning that I had ever given everything about or anything about everything. Like I saw that I was giving everything, not one or two meanings, but thousands of meanings. Every single uh, you know, grain of sand had tons and tons of meanings. Well, it's this size and it's this shape and it has these minerals in it and has this hardness and it's this old and it came from this place and all of this stuff, all of these meanings. But when the veil parted, all the meanings also parted. And all that was left was the awareness of living love everywhere. Everything was living love. And there was an awareness that in every instant of my desire, this love will, will form itself into that which I desire. If I want, um, if I want a chair, okay, love actually molds itself into that, in, into that form in that instant. And it's constantly happening. Every single thing, literally, is the love of God molding itself into exactly what you want 
within your dream. So everything is God. Everything is love. There is not a place, there is not a thing that is not fully saturated with the love of God. And it's already like that. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> because God is God and God is going to stay God. And there's nothing you can do about it. So if what you want is the love of God, this is great news. But if you want your stories to continue, if you want to be right about your stories and your grievances and your heartache and your loneliness and all of this stuff, well, you're not going to be so happy about what I just said. Because everything is the opposite of, of that. If you're having an experience that you don't like, you, you, you better look inside because somewhere inside you want it. You might not consciously like it, but somewhere inside you want it, and that, that desire is manifesting through the love of God into this thing that your ego is saying you don't like. And that's just the way it is. Luckily, the Holy Spirit can use everything that you make you know, through your desires for your own good, for your awakening. The, the Holy Spirit will give you what you what you want, and then uh, ask, "Is are you sure that this is what you want? You know, uh, did you want a conflict with this person? Are you sure you want this, or do you want to let this go? Do you do you uh, do you want an illness? Okay, I I gave you this illness because you wanted it. Now, are you sure that you want it? You know, the ego and and a lot of the mind will say, "Yeah, I want to continue with with this illness all the way to the end." And God in in God's relationship with you. God only says yes. So you want something, God says yes. You want to wake up, God says yes. You want to sleep a little while longer, God says yes. God's relationship is only giving. God only gives. That's in A Course in Miracles. So God gives you what you want and, and cannot do otherwise. So everything that you're getting is what you want. So if you're on a spiritual path, and if you're on a path of awakening, and you really want to awaken, God says yes. It's going to happen. God would help you to forgive yourself, it says in A Course in Miracles. That, and that means, you know, if God would help you to forgive yourself, it must be really, really, really important in the mind of God that you forgive yourself. Because God's going to help you. And if God's going to help you to forgive yourself, it must be super, super, super easy. Because God's helping you. What do you have to do if God's helping you? The power that created this entire universe you know, from the from the from you know the the end of the of time and space down to quantum levels and everything. If that's going to help you to forgive yourself, well, what can you do? Well, what you can do is just you can stand aside and let it be done, because God is really willing to do everything for you. I get excited about this. I had no idea what I was going to say when I started talking, you know, but. But we're talking memory, and this talking is just bringing up this, this fantastic enthusiasm, this just wild joy, this, uh, you know, this uh, celebration inside that God is God, <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, that, and, and that's good. <laughs> I could either just be in this presence of God or I could think my human thoughts, my human thoughts are yeah, 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 addicted, addicted to complaints and all of this stuff. Or I could be in the presence of God, which is like the eternal party of time and space and, and beyond time and space. It's just uh, like the party on the inside, the party of the heart. Uh, I, you know, so I, I would choose the party of the heart. It's so easy to be walking down the street smiling in that consciousness to be walking down the street just whistling because you know i'm i'm so happy and there's no reason for it it's just it's just the way it is yeah i love it anything else that's what i think that's what people understand under fulfilling one's special function because there's no reason that you fulfill it. it it simply is who you are right exactly yeah if you're created by god 
And God only has God to use in your creation. That means your love. And your fear of love and your feelings of inadequacy, unworthiness, not good enough. God says yes to that. You, you can think that if you want. It's not true. Never will be. Never has been. Not. It's just impossible that that could be true. But if you want to think it, God says yes. Says go ahead. How's it working out for you? And after how many lifetimes, you know, we begin to think, you know, this is not working out for me. You know, my way of thinking these uh, limited, tiny, minuscule thoughts of, of unworthiness and loneliness is not working out for me. You know, I'll try something else. You know, in the beginning, you might just want something else. You don't know what it is, but you want something else. And then this starts the part of the seeking. Okay, I'm going to find what it is. You know, and that could take some time. You have to learn different things and learn different ways and learn different possibilities and all that stuff. But at the end, you realize that God was with you the whole time. Once you get it on some level of incarnation, that God is going to be, is really what you want. You know. Most people want peace. Okay, God is peace. Most people want joy. God is joy. Most people want love. God is love. But they don't want to want God. They want to want something uh, something tangible, something that they can see. But everything that they can see is going to come and go. It's a temporary thing. And God never changes and never goes away. And it's there the whole time. The cool thing is, like I've said before, it, it's conscious. You don't really have to meditate to feel the love of God within you now. You just have to turn your attention towards your feeling. And stop saying the feeling is anything other than what it really is, which is the love of God within you now. That's what makes it so simple, just utterly simple. But the human mind says, no, it can't be like that. That's too simple. The human mind actually thinks that something as simple as God can be too simple. But it is. It's like that. You, and if, that if that's true, then God is too simple. Get used to it. Yeah, that's a good point. One yeah, get God used. To be brilliant. Yeah. One wants God to be um, magnificent wants God to be beautiful or this and that and and can't see what is actually in front of your face, right? <laughs> yeah. And what is actually in front of your face is there now. You know, it's not gonna happen when I figure it out. It's there now. What you're gonna figure out is that it was already there and there was nothing to figure out. It was just letting go. Easy words, though. The ego doesn't want to let go. It can be a struggle to let go. This is where the repetitious mind comes in that you can observe. It's like uh, you just think the same thoughts. Those, those are just proof of not letting go. You know, I'm going to think about this grievance of the past again and again and again and again. That's not letting go. Letting go is letting... Is letting is letting go is letting go so that's not there and letting it be replaced by what is there so it does take watching the mind oh i'm doing it again i'm doing it again i'm doing it again i'm doing it again you can ask the holy spirit you can say holy spirit please i promise that if you remind me every single time that i'm thinking the same repetitious thought about me being not good enough or me being lonely or me being inadequate or me being, you know, um, treated unfairly or anything like that. I promise you that I will stop that thought before it finishes because the thought is powerless uh, unless it finishes. So if you stop that thought before it finishes, it does not add to the mountain of the same thought that you have inside. The Holy Spirit is busy cleaning up the mess of your mind. Okay. Now, the be one thing you could do to help is stop making the mess. You know, don't add to the mess because that's just more that the Holy Spirit has to clean up. So stop adding to that. So if the Holy Spirit reminds you, ah, you're adding to the mess again, 
And that reminder, in most cases, will be, it will feel like your own self reminding yourself. It will feel like your own thought, which is a pretty good way that the Holy Spirit can come to you because you can recognize your own thoughts. He's not going to come to you in some way that you don't recognize. So it's going to come, it's going to feel like your own thought, like, oh, I'm thinking it again. You're not really aware. Oh, the Holy Spirit just told me that I was thinking it again. It, you're going to, it's going to feel exactly like you reminded yourself, but that's the Holy Spirit reminding you. Okay, but you made this promise that if the Holy Spirit reminds you, then you're going to in, you're going to interrupt that thought before it finishes. So, you as a promise is a promise. You have to you have to uh, fulfill your promises. So stop that thought. Don't think it again. Don't add to to um, the time it takes for the Holy Spirit to clean up the mess of your mind. The Holy Spirit already has enough to clean up. All you have to do is stop adding to it. And it will be cleaned up. And you will know the peace of God. And you will know a, a gratitude, a thankfulness, greater than anything you've ever thought of being possible. So... Would you like to describe how you went through that process when you were having a grievance in the past, probably? Because you're probably doing it a lot faster now. <laughs> well, okay. In the past, uh, but I also have to admit, it's happening now, too. The ego, the ego's not gone. The ego still, like I said, it wants to do what used to work for it, you know, it wants to do what used to work for it, hoping that it will work for it again. Okay. At the present time, there's the Holy Spirit saying, no, this is the ego trying it again. Don't do that. So it's much less time it takes for the recognition of the ego's tricks now. But in the past, if I had a grievance, I just had to be right. I had to be right. Because if I was wrong, it would add to, uh, well, in this personal mind, and it might be different with other people or the same with other people, being wrong was something that was intolerable for me in the past because that would just make my, my sense of guilt and shame and loneliness and all that stuff and, and inadequacy even worse than it was. Okay. And I was doing everything I could to avoid all of that stuff before I made peace with all of that stuff. And then all that stuff wasn't what I thought it was anymore. But I was doing everything I could not to, not to feel what I didn't want to feel in the past. And being right was the major tool of the ego. So if I thought I was right about something, I, if I thought I was right about a grievance, I could hold on to it forever. And then, you know, in, in the surrender, a lot of that stuff be, just became unimportant there was no sense, there was no need to hang on to it anymore. It just was, was not important. It was like, it's over with now. Okay, but like I say, it still happens now, but there's the awareness that truth is truth and, and grievance is not true. And, and I know what the truth is and the peace of God lies in the truth. So, don't hang on to the grievance. Okay, so the grievance might be gone in just a few seconds now, but that does not mean that the ego is not going to try that very same grievance over and over and over and over and over again. What what to do, you know, and there, you know, what to do? Well, that's just what, what it's like right now, you know. But at the same time, this is a memory of how the awakening happened. You know, so I got to the light and I'm remembering how it was. You know, I got to the light. I was successful at getting to the light. And the grievance was just something that popped up on the way to the light. It, it, it came into being and it disappeared. And then after some time, another one came into being but disappeared again. I got to the light. I made it. I made it to the finish line. I think really 
maybe to answer that question, the best thing that you could do is surrender. Yeah, so maybe we should go deeper into the word surrender and how, how that plays out. It plays out in different ways. You could say, not my way, but your way. Um, also, forgiveness is a good word for surrender. Um, just letting go. Not my way. I let go of my way. I forgive I forgive myself. I, I forgive my past. I let go of, of all things. Now you take over. And it, I think it says in A Course in Miracles, and I know for sure, it takes a lot of trust. Like, in, like a teacher of God is full of trust. Okay. If you're going to surrender, it's going to, you really, really, really have to trust because otherwise it's going to be too fearful. You know, if you have somebody like me telling you that surrender leads to a consciousness which is good, safe, and freedom, that's really great. If you're going to surrender without knowing anything about it at all, without knowing that it's having somebody promise you it's going to be good, safe, and freedom, that takes a, a, almost like a superhuman trust. But there are plenty of people who've done that, and they come back and teach. Yeah, surrender, trust, and forgiveness. Yeah, yeah you, you got to have it all. Surrender, trust, and forgiveness. Surrender and forgiveness are the same thing. But, but the trust, the trust that it will be better. Like surrendering, you can trust that it's better than not surrendering. And then, like the Course does say, you know, trust will bring you the experience that what you trust really works. And that will make further trusting easier, which will bring more experiences, proving that that trusting really works, which will make further trusting even easier. And you get that cycle of your mind going. That's absolutely true. Trust, you know, does work. Surrender does work. If you try it, you'll get the experience you, that it does work, and then you'll want to try it more, because those those um, revelations of the fruits of your trust and the fruits of your surrender that grows and grows and grows and grows and grows, and after a while, the old mind is gone. You're in a brand new mind of surrender and forgiveness and trust, and all of that stuff that came before is not there anymore. And you won't be able to understand why you ever held on to it to begin with. It will not be. It will not hold any attraction to you, once you really know that surrender and trust and freedom and forgiveness are the result of surrender, trust, freedom, and forgiveness. You won't want grievance anymore, because grievance. You, you'll know in your heart of hearts that grievance is valueless, and surrender has all value. I mean, literally, all the value there is. You'll get God by surrendering. You get nothing by holding on to grievance. So what's it going to be? God or nothing? That's basically the choice. <laughs> you know, if you're asleep in a dream, you're choosing nothing. But you could wake up and have God. God will say yes to either of those choices. But you're not going to choose uh, to stay asleep forever. And if you're listening to this now, you've already chosen to waken. So congratulations. I congratulate your, uh, your decision to awaken. I congratulate your inquiry, your inner inquiry as to, uh, to the truth of the world that you see. The world you see holds nothing that you want. Here's something interesting. I used to think like, uh, that, the pr that, that I must have done something really wrong. This must be prison. And then Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, the world is not a prison for God's Son. The world is the place where God's Son finds his freedom. So it used to be for me that this was a prison for me. I was stuck in a world I didn't want to be in. And there were lots and lots of suicidal thoughts to get out of this world, but that never happened because there was an awareness that I tried that a lot of times before, and I always came back to the world. 
And then Jesus came in one of those early morning meditations and said, suicide does not end the dream. And right then, all the suicidal thoughts just disappeared forever because what I wanted was the end of the dream. And he told me, well, suicide's not going to do that, so there must be something else. And that, that something else is just let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. Not my way, God, your way. My way will not work. Your way uh, will work. And it has worked. And it did work. And then, then the gratitude pours in. Thank you, 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 thank you. If you're on a path of awakening, you have every reason to be grateful because everything that you need will be given to you. You don't need to fear lack. Everything that you need, no matter what it is, you'll have exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. That's beautiful. Yep. So, anything that I haven't asked that you'd like to add? Start your day with love. Fill your day with love. Spend your day with love. End your day with love. This is the way to God. Beautiful. Yeah, it is good to, to begin and end your day in some spiritual manner. Like for me personally, my clock wakes me up to an Amma budget. And Amma does a, an online thing ever since COVID started. She's been doing an, a live stream every day from India. So I start my day with Amma and that lasts two or three hours. And then I end my day with the mantra. It says, Asatoma Om, Asatoma Satgamaya, Damasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu. Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu. Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Hari Om. And that means from, from the untruth lead us to the truth. From darkness, lead us to light. From death, lead us to immortality. May all beings in all worlds be happy. I am peace, peace, peace. And that's the essence of a spiritual path right there. Yeah, so before we end this, I'd like to ask you, how can one connect with you if one wants to oh website uh my website is premmulberry.com great send it to me and i'll i'll post it in the episode is, description is that on the um on telegram because i might work and i can't write anything down right now but we'll definitely uh, go on your website yeah i'll i'll, I'll put it there I would like to end with a prayer, if that's okay with you. Yes, that's wonderful. Let's do that. Oh, may God's great and Holy Spirit guide us. May we always live and move and have our being in her infinite, omnipresent, divine, light, truth, love, compassion, awareness, forgiveness, peace, freedom, joy, power, knowledge, sound, and glory. Om, Katsat Om, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you everyone for listening. May this be fruitful and helpful. And yeah, please review the podcast wherever you're listening to it. Spread the word so that more people find it. And thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Brent. Thank you. God bless you all. Uh, is, uh, I really want to say I resonate with um, this podcast. It, it, it's just perfect. I, I've been doing Course of Miracles for about four years, and uh, I've done some uh, meditation in the past, and uh, everything you said was uh, was it's, it's like I was talking to myself. <laughs> remembering um, all the things that I, I've been working on and, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, thank you, Julio. Bless you, guys. Yeah, bless yeah. you. Bless you.